In Genesis 11, you had a world that is in need of a blessing. It's a world uh, under judgment. Uh, it's a world that's been scattered and uh, so forth. And uh, it needs uh, some special blessing from God. And that's exactly what happens in chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3. And I'd like to read that with you together. Genesis 12 and verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed <coughs> through you. Now, if you uh, will go to your reading once again, I want to, uh, to show you on page 24 uh, you will have some of this material, and there's an illustration at the bottom of page 24. You see the green box uh, once again. So I'd like to have that in front of you uh, at this point. Because God offers a positive judgment through Abraham on all the nations of the world. Do you see that connection? All the nations of the world were in chapter 11. They were under the curse, under judgment. But now in chapter 12, God acts in behalf of the nations through the call of Abraham. Through Abraham, all of these nations would be blessed. So that is uh, a very uh, powerful aspect here. And you will notice uh, there is a blessing. Uh, there is the concept of a nation. And there's a concept of the land. I want you to remember the three basic relationships in the Garden of Eden, a relationship to God, a relationship to the environment, and a relationship to each other. And we see uh, those three relationships here again. God promises blessing, which will restore the relationship between God and the creation. Uh, God promises a land, which reminds us of the earth that is given to human beings, to uh, shepherd, to, uh, to steward, if you will. And uh, he also speaks of the nation, which implies a community, human beings in relationship to each other. So the three basic relationships of creation are at the core of this whole thing. And remember, the curse is simply the breaking of those three relationships. We saw how the relationship with God was broken, relationship between human beings and the earth was broken, relationship with each other was broken. So the original creation, three relationships, sin, uh, damaging, breaking uh, those relationships. And now we see in Abraham, God is addressing those same three issues there. Now turn to Genesis 17. Genesis 17 and verses 1 and 8, or 1 through 8 because that essentially repeats the threefold promise. And it's important that we read both of these texts so that we see the full picture coming together. Genesis 17, verses 1 to 8. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. What does that remind you of? Greatly increase your numbers. It's a reference back to the promise in chapter 1, a promise that was repeated in chapter 9, uh, that human beings were to multiply and fill the earth. God says to Abraham, I will multiply you. I will make you uh, have many descendants. So here we see a reference back to the relationship. It is through sexuality, through human relationship between male and female, that this multitude of uh, descendants, increasing the numbers, uh, will occur. Verse 3, Abram fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. Well, now it's not just many descendants, but many nations will come from Abram. 
No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Hebrew language loves puns, by the way. And the Am at the end of Abraham is, uh, means nation. And uh, Av means father. So he's the father of many nations, Avraham. So uh, your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I'll make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I'll establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you. You See what's happening here? God is restoring the relationship between himself and the human race through Abraham. Abraham will be the means of restoring what was lost in the Garden of Eden. So I will establish my covenant, uh, etc., with you. Verse 8, the whole land of Canaan, where you are now an alien, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be your God. So going back to page 24 of your reading, uh, you will see in this box, it compares Genesis 12 and Genesis 17. Uh, You have the three relationships there, but uh, they're described in terms of blessing nation and land in Genesis 12. Uh, but they're described in terms of a covenant relationship of many descendants and uh, of Canaan uh, getting specific about that land. A particular portion of the earth would be the place from which uh, Abraham's descendants uh, would operate. So you have here that Genesis 12 and Genesis 17 are the same threefold promise repeated in different words. Now, uh, if you will move ahead to page 25, I want you to notice the parallel between these three promises and uh, also the three relationships uh, back in creation. You have uh, on page 25, you have the three relationships with God, with others, the earth, and you have the curse of Genesis 3. There's exile, uh, which separates God from human beings. Uh, There is the childbirth pain, uh, which challenges the relationship between Adam and Eve and uh, their descendants. And then you have the thorns and the weeds and so forth, uh, which reflect the breaking of the relationship between human beings uh, and uh, the earth. So we put this all together on page 26. If you go to page 26 near the top, uh, you will see again a green box. And there it puts all of these together. The three relationships of creation are followed by the three breakings of relationship under the curse, Genesis 3. And Genesis 12 and 17 pick up on the same. In other words, the problem of sin is the breaking of relationship between human beings and God. In Genesis 12 and 17, that's restored through the blessing Uh, which involves a relationship between God and Abraham, first of all, and then a relationship between God and the descendants of Abraham after that. The creation of male and female is distorted by sin, uh, you know, bickering and disagreement and fear coming into those relationships. And uh, God promises Abraham that he will have many descendants. In other words, God will undo the curse in behalf of him and his family. And then finally, the uh, dominion over the earth, uh, which was ruined in Genesis 3, is to be restored through what God will do in the land of Canaan uh, with uh, Abraham's descendants. Uh, So we see really that Abraham's call is a call to restore the Garden of Eden. Abraham is invited to be the means of restoring the relationships that were broken uh, in the context of the fall. So uh, if you're following your outline uh, from uh, module 7a, which is the Pentateuch, you'll notice we've covered three uh, of those areas, or we've begun to cover them. Uh, Originally it's creation, then there's the primeval history, and now uh, the third area is the patriarchal era, Abraham and uh, all that follows, and we have moved uh, into that area at this point.